Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your five minute devotional. Well, it's Lenten season and we've been journeying along with Christ as he gets closer and closer to the cross. And this week, we're actually going to cheat. We're jumping past the death, burial, and the resurrection and getting to one of those stories where Christ appears to the disciples in his newly resurrected body. Now, the disciples, they, they realize Christ has been raised from the dead, but they're not sure exactly what to do with themselves. And so they've kind of gone back to their old ways. In fact, Christ is going to see them fishing today. I don't know about you, but for me, when I'm not sure what to do with myself, I usually focus on things that I know that I'm good at or things from my past. Now, in this case, they're not necessarily going back to the sinful way of life, yet at the same time, they are kind of going back to the simpler way of life. You know, the way Paul puts it is putting on the new man, as in you're taking off these old garments because God has given you a new way to live. And I think the disciples are betwixt and between. They're not sure exactly what that means for them right now. And Christ has this amazing kind of allegory, real life story. And so I'm going to pick up in John chapter 21 here it says the day was now breaking Jesus stood on the beach and the disciples didn't know or did not know that it was Jesus so Jesus said children do you have any fish do you they answered him and said no and he said to them cast your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find a catch so they cast it and they weren't able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. Now, if you've ever been fishing before, the right side of the boat, the left side of the boat probably doesn't make much difference in general terms, especially when you're net fishing. So uh, they're going to, of course, realize very quickly who it is they're talking to. Verse 7 says, therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord, right? He's figured it out. So when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on for he was stripped down for work. And he threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in on a little boat, for they weren't that far from the land. And about 100 yards away, they were dragging the net full of fish. I can imagine the excitement. There is the Lord. There is the Savior. All this time, I thought I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my life. And there he is. And he just jumps in the boat. So when they got out to the land, they saw a charcoal fire had already been laid and there were fish placed on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you've now caught. Simon Peter went up and he drew the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. I love the little detail that they stopped for a minute. They counted the fish. They also point out the fact the net wasn't torn. That net couldn't handle that many fish clearly. So often today, a believer will share a story about God's provision vision in their life, a healing or a safeguard on the highway, something of that nature. And people want to immediately go, well, that's this tiny little thing and it's circumstantial. Here, the disciples are very quick to point out something that could be just sort of set aside, but it was God's provision in their life. One of the reasons why they knew God was working. Now they've brought this fish over and they're getting to sit down for this meal with the Savior. I love this. I have to share it at starting verse 12. It says, Jesus said to him, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him and say, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus came and he took bread and he gave it to them and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. The last point I want to make is the disciples didn't have to question whether this was Jesus or not because they knew him because of the actions. You know, a real believer still hears his voice today. And just because you know that God is speaking to you doesn't make that evident to everyone else. I encourage you to strengthen your relationship with him. So when he draws near, when there are miracles present, you can give him the glory like John has here in this story. Well, I hope this has been as encouraging 
to you as it has been to me. If you are struggling today with seeing the Savior or drawing near, or maybe you're even struggling with going back to your old ways of life when things get hard, I would love for you to leave a comment down below. I would enjoy praying for you and entering into your life in that way. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend so we can continue this journey to the cross together. Well, God bless, and I'll see you next week.